Again, good afternoon. Let's start. I'd like to welcome everybody to this pep talk this afternoon. Please mute yourself, but always show your video picture. Sign in your name, your Facebook account, or email address in the chat box. Please include the names of companions attending with you. Use the chat box to ask questions and make comments while the pep talk is on. There will be group pictures at the start and end of the pep talk. So please show your face in the video. As a reminder, please take the online learning evaluation test exercise for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get a certificate as shown below. Okay, The link is already in the chat box. Another reminder, 50 OLETE certificates entitle one mentee or participant to a voucher for a RO Hoson telemedical consultation as shown below. Okay, this is the voucher. We are now on the 79th pep talk. So some of you have availed of the uh, voucher already after uh, passing or completing successfully 50 OLETE certificates. Another request that I'd like to make is that please type in your feedback in the chat box during the open forum and before we part ways. I need this for some evaluation purposes. So let's now have a group picture taking before we start the pep talk proper in two minutes. Please show your face on the video. Okay. Okay. Ready? All set? One. Jeng, would you like to show your face, Jeng De Castro? One. You're not around, Jeng. <laughs> One, two. Okay. Ready? Get ready. One, two, three. I have a uh, patient empowerment program in which I like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. There are three courses in the pep talk. I completed the core course on October 9, 2021. From October 23, 2021 onwards, I've been tackling health disorder and health issue courses. This may, this may take three years or longer. My pep talk today is entitled Viral uh, Liver Cancer and Viral Hepatitis Awareness. This pep talk forms part of my contribution to the Liver Cancer and Viral Hepatitis Awareness and Prevention Month in the Philippines for the year 2023. The empowerment objective is for the lay people to have an understanding of the relationship or association of liver cancer and viral hepatitis and their prevention in health management. The contents of this pep talk will be the following. When is the liver cancer and viral hepatitis awareness and prevention month in the Philippines? Why the law on such an awareness? What are the objectives? How do we observe this uh, particular month for you and myself. The other contents will be how common is liver cancer in the Philippines? What are the common causes of liver cancer in the Philippines? Why prevent viral hepatitis to control liver cancer? What is the mechanism by which viral hepatitis B or C cause liver cancers? What is, what is hepatitis, different types and causes of hepatitis? What are viral hepatitis and what are the different types? What are the symptoms of viral hepatitis, both acute and chronic? How to diagnose this uh, acute and chronic hepatitis? 
what are the diagnostic tests to firm up a suspicion of acute and chronic viral hepatitis? What are the differences among hepatitis A, B, and C? What are the concerns with hepatitis B, especially in the Philippines? What are the preventive measures, the usual diagnostic tests and treatment? And last, lastly, what are my advo advocating statements and advice on liver cancer and viral hepatitis awareness and prevention month for the Filipinos, our kababayan? So for the first topic, when is the liver cancer and viral hepatitis awareness and prevention month in the Philippines? So when is this? So it is the every January of each year since 2013 through the uh, Republic Act number 10526. Okay. So the liver cancer and viral hepatitis awareness and prevention month has been promulgated. So every January we celebrate, uh, we, we observe this particular month, liver cancer and viral hepatitis awareness and prevention month. Why was the law promulgated? So it is to decrease and control the incidence of liver cancers that are associated with viral hepatitis for the following reasons. Because viral hepatitis is one of the causes of liver cancer in the Philippines. And in fact, it's probably the most common cause of viral of liver cancer in the Philippines. And viral hepatitis is preventable or controllable. The assumption here is that uh, there is a significant or high incidence of liver cancer in the Philippines that is associated with viral hepatitis. So that's why we have to control the incidence of liver cancers that are associated with viral hepatitis. The objectives of the uh, Liver Cancer and Viral Hepatitis Awareness and Prevention Month are the following. Okay. A comprehensive public education and awareness program shall be undertaken on the viral hepatitis. So the program shall specifically discuss the causes, transmission, consequences, diagnosis, treatment, and the prevention of viral hepatitis, including the need for immediate infant, remember that infant or baby immunization, and the indispensability of observing the correct schedule and dosages, as well as the importance of child and adult vaccination, vaccination for both adult and children, for a holistic approach in battling the virus. So how do we observe liver cancer and viral hepatitis? So you, you make an effort to know the relationship of the liver cancer and viral hepatitis and their prevention. We, as we know that there are a lot of causes for liver cancer, but one of the most common cause is chronic viral hepatitis. Okay, so we will be focusing on this. Okay, so you have to make an effort to know this. So how reading, attend lectures and talks provided by DOH and other agencies. And of course, my talk today, this is my contribution. Examine your body for possible chronic viral hepatitis. Do a self-examination of your body and then you, if, if need to, you consult a physician for a check or if you have symptoms of viral hepatitis. So if you do all these things that I mentioned, you are empower, empowering yourself. You are contributing to the goal of Awareness Month, which is prevention of the liver cancer secondary to chronic hepatitis. So on my part, how do I observe this one? Okay. So I'm doing this pep talk on liver cancer and viral hepatitis awareness. This is part of my patient empowerment program as well as part of my education for health development in the Philippines program. So this is my contribution. Okay. How common is liver cancer in the Philippines? It is number four in frequency in both sexes meaning both males and females, in all ages after breast, lung, and colorectum as of 2020. 
Okay, so breast still the number one, number two, lung cancer, colorectal, colorectal, number three, and then number four will be the liver cancer. This is based on the 2020 data from WHO. In 2020, it has caused 8,000 deaths among Filipinos. So this is the latest data that we have. So nobody likes to have liver cancer and dies from it, right? So we should be aware on how to prevent liver cancer if it can be prevented. What are the common causes of liver cancer in the Philippines? Chronic hepatitis B virus is the most common. Okay. Chronic hepatitis C, another type of hepatitis virus. Okay. And then non-alcoholic liver diseases. Then prolonged intake of aflatoxin and other uh, chemical carcinogens, aflatoxin is a form of virus, uh, fung fungus. Okay. And then the other one, the other possible common cause is heavy alcohol consumptions. Okay. So remember these five common causes of liver cancer in the Philippines. Some would add also obesity. Obesity is another cause for liver cancer. Of these common causes, Chronic hepatitis infection is said to be the most common. And between the two, hepatitis B and hepatitis C, hepatitis B is more common. Okay. So why prevent viral hepatitis to control liver cancer? Number one reason is that viral hepatitis is preventable. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C, which are the most common causes of liver cancers, are preventable. So we must prevent hepatitis B and C to lower the risk for liver cancers. So what is the mechanism for it by which the viral hepatitis B and C cause liver cancer? So once you have the infection with this hepatitis B and C, this will lead to inflammation okay, and then eventually scarring of the liver. Okay, if that, uh, if that inflammation did not resolve by itself, Okay, so it's, once there's a scarring, okay, which is, uh, it can be in various degree, some will be in the severe form, which is called cirrhosis, and mga bukol-bukol na, okay, this is a, uh, the most severe form of uh, scarring, cirrhosis, okay, so this can lead to development of liver cancer. So you can see here, initial stage is inflammation of the liver. Okay, and then eventually if there's scarring, it can lead to cirrhosis, then eventually to cancer. Another illustration here. So if the hepatitis is not controlled by the body or by, the, by some medications, then it can lead to chronicity, to a chronic hepatitis. Okay. And then with the, with the continuation of the inflammation, Okay, you can have cirrhosis, no, scarring, extensive scarring. Eventually, it can lead to hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. Okay, hepatocellular can carcinoma is another name for the liver cancer. So what is hepatitis? Let's go back to the basic first. Okay, what is hepatitis? It's a general term used to describe the inflammation of the liver. It can be acute or chronic. It's acute okay, when it occurs suddenly and then goes away. If the period of inflammation lasts less than six months, this is the usual cutoff that um, medical people use. If uh, less than six months, no Allah, with normalization of the liver function test, then you can call it acute. But if the inflammation persists beyond six months, kung tuloy -tuloy pa, then with the arrangement of liver function test, then you can you, you are in now in the stage of chronic hepatitis. Okay, chronic hepatitis. And this is what we are af af afraid of. Okay, chronic hepatitis is more worrisome as there is a risk for permanent liver damage, cirrhosis, leading to liver failure and liver cancer. So yung chronic hepatitis is what we are really afraid of. So what are the different causes of hepatitis in general? Okay. 
virus is just one of them. Okay, so not all hepatitis are caused by the virus, but it's still, but it's the most common. Okay, the the other causes are the drugs, the alcohol, the chemicals such as the dry cleaning solvent, carbon tetrachloride, and vinyl chloride used to be, uh, used to make plastic. Okay, parasites such as amoeba hepatitis certain genetic disorders and other autoactive immune system that mistakenly attack the liver, the so-called autoimmune hepatitis. Okay. So drugs, remember drugs can, can cause also hepatitis. Very no, uh, notable here will be the paracetamol. Okay. Alcohol can also cause hepatitis. But it's still the most common is still uh, the most common cause of hepatitis in the Philippines is the viral hepatitis. There are several types of uh, viruses that are involved in the viral hepatitis, okay? So A, B, C, D, E, up to G. But in the Philippines, the more common viruses are hepatitis A, B, and C, okay? So A is not so worrisome, but B and C are the, wor the worrisome ones, especially when it becomes chronic. What are the symptoms of viral hepatitis? Not everyone will develop symptoms. So that's there's such thing as asymptomatic hepatitis, meaning patients with hepatitis without symptoms. And then those patients with symptoms will be called, uh, will, will have symptomatic hepatitis. So although majority of adults, about 70% develop symptoms, okay, adults 70%, but many young children do not. Okay, mga bata, hindi, walang masyadong symptoms. So adult and children over five years of age are more likely to have symptoms. So below five years, bihira may symptoms yung bata. The symptoms usually include the following, fever, fatigue, loss of appetite, joint pains, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea. Okay, diarrhea usually for hepatitis A virus only. Okay, so you can notice that all of these symptoms are non-specific, parang may flu, parang may dyspepsia because of the abdominal pain or gastro, ganun din, abdominal pain and diarrhea, non-specific. Okay, so the other symptoms that the patient, that patients can have when they have uh, viral hepatitis will be dark urine or what we call tea-colored, parang chaa, ang kulay. Okay, clay-colored bowel movement Medyo puti puti yung yung dumi. then jaundice or yellowing of the yellowing of the sclerae or the, the in the skin and or the eyes sclerae means the eyes okay so once you have this uh, three any of these symptoms na okay, okay. so the, the, this is more or less uh, in, indicate uh, this more or less indicate that you have uh, you have uh, liver involvement already, okay? Liver involvement, okay? So the upper ones are usually non-specific, but once you have this uh, jaundice, dark urine color, okay, then you start think uh, think strongly of the liver involvement, okay? Pattern recognitions for acute viral hepatitis, usually based on physical exam. Once you have jaundice, meaning ito, naninilaw yung mata, the white part, naninilaw, okay? And or you have tea-colored urine, medyo brownish ang urine mo. And then there's a, yung sa liver, because this acute, acute inflammation, medyo masakit yung upper, right upper quadrant where the liver is usually located, okay? So if these physical findings are reinforced or are associated with symptoms of fever, fatigue, muscle weakness, loss of appetite, abdominal discomfort, then more or less you're sure that most likely more than 90% sure that you're dealing with hepatitis. So the diagnostic test to firm up a suspicion for acute viral hepatitis are the following. Liver function test, hepatitis panel, ultrasound of the liver. These are the three most common tests that are being done to diagnose more specifically or to come out with a more definite diagnosis of viral hepatitis, both acute and chronic. Okay. Now, what are the uh, symptoms of chronic hepatitis and how do we recognize it? 
Again, as I said, most people have no symptoms or feel healthy for many years after the acute bout of the, the hepatitis. Once after they have acute hepatitis, usually pag nag-resolve, so many years, wala silang nararamdaman. Okay? Now, of these people, 15 to 25 percent develop complications in the liver, such as cirrhosis and liver cancer. So meaning, yung acute hepatitis na progress into chronic, hindi totally nawala. Okay? In the early stages of liver cirrhosis and liver cancer, again, in the early stage, maaga pa, the patients may remain to have no symptoms, usually walang symptoms. They become to, they, they only have symptoms once they are uh, they have already diseases that are associated with cirrhosis and liver cancer, and usually these symptoms are chronic fatigue, palaging pagod, feeling of tiredness, jaundice, uh, yung, yung uh, paninilaw, hindi nawawala, and then if there is a liver mass. No, that that is a suspicion for cancer. Then you start think you you start thinking of cirro liver cancer, cirrhosis, and liver cancer. Again, to we'll come out with a more definite diagnosis of chronic viral hepatitis, these three tests are being done: liver function test, hepatitis panel, and ultrasound of the liver. What are the differences among hepatitis A, B, and C? As I said, these are the most common type in the Philippines, A, B, and C. They usually have similar symptoms and manifestation during the early stage of the disease, okay, in the acute stage, and but they are caused by different viruses. Hepatitis A, let's go to hepatitis A muna. It's an infection that is acquired through the intake of contaminated food and drinks. Okay, yung mga, yung mga paborito nating kinakain sa sa gitna ng daan, okay? So it is self-limiting and usually resolved without specific treatment. Kusang nawawala usually. It is an acute infection, okay? newly acquired because and does not cause people to become carrier of the virus for a long time or chronic, unlike hepatitis B and C. So yung A hindi, nag, hindi, hindi nagiging chronic. Symptoms usually include diarrhea kasi mga pagkain, drinks ang usual cause. It has a vaccine for prevention and protection if you want to be protected, especially those who are traveling in countries or in areas that are prevalent or endemic for hepatitis A. Okay, So usually two shots at six months apart. The estimates of long-term protection for fully vaccinated, okay, which is, uh, that is two full dose series, suggest that protection for, from hepatitis A virus can last for at least 25 years in adults and at least 14 to 20 years in children. Okay. So it is said that once you fully recover from hepatitis A infection, you develop antibodies protecting you for life. So this is not a major problem. The major problem will be the hepatitis uh, B and C. So how is hepatitis A being treated? Just treat the symptoms, okay? Rest, okay? Adequate nutrition and fluids. Okay, lang, okay? So some people with severe symptoms like severe diarrhea and vomiting will need medical care in the hospital. But for the minor ones, they just need to rest, then just eat the nutri nutritious diet and then high oral fluid intake. Now, hepatitis B and C are infections that can be acquired from the infected, from infected blood and body fluids, blood and body fluids from somebody, okay? So, in contrast, as I said, hepatitis A is acquired through contaminated foods and drinks. So, they can also begin as acute infection, Mona. So, as I said, B and C starts with acute, then later on becoming chronic if it's if it's not controlled. Okay, so pag hindi siya na control, it can cause complications in the liver such as cirrhosis and liver cancer. Okay, and when you say cirrhosis, it usually connotes some uh, baka pumunta rin sa liver failure. In the Philippines, around one in ten people have chronic hepatitis B. And six in 1,000 have chronic hepatitis C. Kaya mas common yung hepatitis B than C. Okay. 
So here, it's more common. Okay. So vaccines, availability. Vaccines can be, uh, are made, are usually available for hepatitis B, but for hepatitis C, there is no vaccine as of now, as of today. Okay. So curability of chronic hepatitis B and C. Chronic hepatitis B at present cannot be cured once you have it. Chronic, I will talk about the chronic. Pag acute, baka ma mawala siya by itself or by other measures. But for chronic, usually there is no cure, uh, no cure already. So medications can be given to slow down the complications of chronic hepatitis. As I said, chronic hepatitis can lead to severe scarring leading to cirrhosis, liver failure, and eventually baka liver cancer. But for chronic hepatitis B, fortunately, it can still be cured. Okay. But uh, so pills can often be taken for eight to twelve weeks and have a cure rate of 95% or greater. Okay. But the caveat here is that uh, the chronic hepatitis C must be diagnosed and treated early to have this good uh, percentage of cure. Medications for chronic hepatitis B and C, I want to tell you that it is very, very expensive. Okay. 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 So for the B, here are samples of the drugs that can be used. Okay. Okay. As I said, there's no cure for this. Okay. But uh, it can slow down the progression of the uh, of the disease, and then for chronic hepatitis C, okay, so the directly direct acting antivirus for hepatitis C again, these are very very expensive, okay, but it has a good chance for cure, okay, as long as it's discovered early. How common is hepatitis B in the Philippines? This is our concern, hepatitis B, more than hepatitis B. But uh, just the same, we, uh, we also considered hepatitis C as because it can also lead to liver cancer. Okay? But uh, the priority is hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is a major public health problem in the Philippines. An estimated 7.3 million adult Filipinos or 16.7% of the adult population are chronically infected, making the country hyper-endemic for hepatitis B. So a uh, 2000 survey done before showed the prevalence of hepatitis B to be highest in this age group, 20 to 49 year of age, medyo bata pa, which comprise the workforce and those entering the workforce. Hepatitis B is an infectious disease of the liver caused by hepatitis B virus. In the acute stage, the symptoms may be similar to having flu, and some, but not all, can have jaundice, yellowing of the eye and the sclerae, and the uh, skin. In some patients, it can become chronic, meaning it can be a long-term or lifelong infection. And persons with chronic hepatitis B infection are at risk of liver cirrhosis, liver failure, and liver cancer. There is no cure for hepatitis B, just to repeat, to emphasize. The good news, however, is that it usually goes away itself in four to eight weeks. Yun what tinatawag na spontaneous remission. Okay. Okay. So more than nine, majority pa rin, nine out of ten who got hepatitis B totally recovered. Okay. However, in one in 20 people who get hepatitis B, as adult become carrier, which means they have chronic infection. Okay. Another good news is that uh, there are effective and safe vaccines against hepatitis B, but it has to be given before infection set in. Okay. So yan ang, yan ang uh, dapat ano, malaman natin. So it's good news that it has vaccines, but it has to be given before hepatitis B infection set in. Transmission and exposure, how does one get hepatitis B? As I said, through blood, body fluids, okay, semen, okay, and other body fluids. So it can also uh, be acquired through birth, okay, spread from a hepatitis B positive mother to her baby, 
through sex with an infected partner, sharing of needles, syringes, and other drug injection equipment with an infected person, especially those drug addicts. Okay, So even in hospitals, it can happen. Sharing razors near clippers, manicure, and pedicure. Okay. Toothbrushes, pwede rin. Direct contact with the blood and open wounds of an infected person. Exposure to blood from needle stick or other sharp instruments. Kaya ingat din ang mga health workers in the hospital because they do a lot of blood uh, extraction, of blood, uh, needle prick. Okay. So who are at risk for hepatitis B? Since the Philippines in the, Fili the Philippines is considered to be endemic or hyperendemic for hepatitis B, almost everyone without antibody, kung wala ka pang antibody, okay, or without any vaccination, can be infected. So everybody is a potential uh, candidate for hepatitis B. If you don't have any antibodies that is present in your body, and then if you don't have vaccination yet. So who are at risk? Again, infants born to infected mother, people who have sex with an infected partner, those who have multiple sex partners are also at high risk, those who have sexually transmitted diseases, okay, so these are all related infected partner, multiple sex, okay, men, homosexual, men who have sexual partner with other men, okay, people who inject drugs and share needles, syringes, and other drug equipment, mga drug addicts, People who live in the same household with an infected individual, yung mga kasama may, may, may hepatitis B, and those who work in occupations where they're exposed to infected blood and body fluids like the hospitals, and then hemodialysis patients because they also deal with blood. Okay. And how common does chronic or lifelong infection develop in a person infected with hepatitis B? So it depends on the age that one becomes exposed or infected. Though the younger the person is when infected, the higher the chance that he or she will have a lifelong infection with the virus. That's why usually mga bata ang kakaroon ng lifelong chronic infection, if not uh, treated early. So 90% of infected infants will develop chronic infection. Yan yung sinabi ko earlier. Okay. Approximately 25 to 50 percent of children infected between 1 to 5 will develop chronic infection. So, yun nakakatakot talaga sa mga bata. Na? Okay. So, the risk will drop to 6 to 10 percent when the, when the person, when the patient is over 5 years of age. So, yung bata ang delikado rito. Okay. So, in the Philippines and worldwide, most people with chronic hepatitis acquire infection at birth and during early childhood. Okay. Remember that, huh? At birth and early childhood. Majority, even in other countries. How serious is chronic hepatitis B? As I said, it is serious enough to cause liver damage, cirrhosis, liver failure, liver cancer, eventually death. Okay. Once you have liver cancer, the mortality rate, the death rate is very, very high. Okay? So liver cancer is the fourth most common cancer in the Philippines. It is fatal when diagnosed late and left untreated, making it the second leading cause of cancer death in the Philippines. Okay? Uh, how, who should be vaccinated against hepatitis B? Because of the high rates of hepatitis B infection in the Philippines, Universal vaccination is mandated. So practically everybody should be vaccinated unless they are they already have antibodies. Okay, so meaning they have previous infection and then they recovered and they they have uh, antibodies to the hepatitis B already. So hepatitis B infection is usually recommended for infants. Mga babies starting with the first dose of vaccine within 24 hours, in panganganak ko lang, injection na na, all children and adolescents younger than 19 years old who have not been vaccinated before, yung, yung mga hindi pa vaccinated at birth, they can still have the vaccination. And people whose sexual partner have hepatitis B, sexually active persons who have multiple partners should also be vaccinated. Okay. Persons undergoing treatment for sexually transmitted disease, 
sex people who have sexual contact with other men who share needles, syringes, and other drug equipment, who have household contacts with people who are infected, health workers, okay, those with end-stage renal disease which uh, needs dialysis, okay, should also have the uh, vaccination, and then residents and staff of facilities of disabled person, kasi kami sa marami rin may hepatitis B in, the, in that house, People with chronic liver disease, okay, aside from having hepatitis B, should also have this vaccination. People with HIV or AIDS infection should also have. And anyone who wishes to be protected from hepatitis B virus infection should be vaccinated. So this is for us. okay. So as part of our advocacy is that uh, if you want to avoid liver cancer in the future, you just you have to check your blood and see whether you you are protected already or you need uh, protection through a vaccination of anti-hepatitis B. For hepatitis B vaccine, okay, so usually there are for long-lasting immunity, you need three to four doses depending on which type of vaccine. Okay. Children should get their first dose at birth and then complete the series by age month, eight, six months. Usually the baby would get the second dose at one month and then the third dose at six months. So catch up, meaning those who are not uh, vaccinated before when they, uh, when they uh, were born, after they were born. So these are recommended for them. Ooh, okay. So what is the hepatitis B panel? So this... These are the tests that will show if one has hepatitis B. Hep hepatitis B is done to check if you have acute or chronic infection. So through the panel, you will be able to tell whether acute ang infection mo or chronic, and whether you have recovered from the infection, and whether you're immune to hepatitis B. Kung immune ka na, you don't need vaccination any anymore. If you are not immune, then you need to be vaccinated. So these are the information that you can get from the hepatitis B panel. So example, specific uh, example of the test, hepatitis B surface antigen. Okay, so if it's positive, meaning you may have acute or chronic infection and you can, you may be able to, you may transmit the disease to others. But if it's negative on report, then you are not infected. Okay you're not infected. But this data is not uh, is not sufficient yet because you have to know whether, if you're not infected, you have to know whether uh, you have antibodies already or not. Okay, So anti-HBS, meaning another test that will reinforce this uh, hepatitis uh, B surface antigen, is that uh, once you are positive for this one, that means you have received a successful vaccination against hepatitis B, okay? Or you have recovered from a uh, infection before, so you are protected from future infection. So mas maganda ang combination ng negative hepatitis B surface antigen and then positive for uh, anti-HBS, okay? So okay ka na, protected ka na, okay? So there are other tests which are very complicated, which I will not explain anymore. Okay, we we'll just leave the leave this to the doctors to explain. Okay. So what are the treatment for hepatitis B? Let's start with acute hepatitis B. Acute. So treatment is mostly supportive in the form of rest, adequate nutrition, and hydration, just like hepatitis A. But in some cases. Hospitalization is needed particularly for those who are unable to eat due to vomiting and lack of appetite. You just have to, uh, to rest when, once you have acute hepatitis. Some will develop signs of uh, liver failure such as disorientation, confusion, or even coma needing urgent hospitalization. So these are the more severe type of uh, acute viral hepatitis B. And these patients may be given antiviral drugs that I mentioned earlier, but these are very expensive. But uh, and then they might they may be uh, be prepared for a possible liver transplant. Okay. How about chronic hepatitis B? There are several drugs available. The choice depending on several factors. However, not all patients need to be treated. 
Patients should be evaluated by doctors experienced in the management of hepatitis B. Okay. For people with chronic hepatitis B, even those without symptoms and need long-term monitoring for early detection and complications of the liver such as cirrhosis and liver cancer, they have to be monitored. If there, there's no active treatment for chronic hepatitis B, then they have to be monitored for possible development of cirrhosis and liver cancer. Para kung nag-develop yan, like liver cancer, it can be treated, it should be treated as soon as possible. How can you help keep your liver stay healthy if you have hepatitis? People infected with hepatitis B should have regular checkup with their doctors. Alcohol intake should be avoided as this can aggravate the liver damage. Okay, As we said, alcohol intake can cause also hepatitis or liver cancer. Infected individuals need to consult their doctors before taking medications. Okay, kasi mahal din yung mga medications na yun. Herbal supplements and over-the-counter medicines. The other things that have to be managed would be obesity, diabetes, and cholesterol problems because this can contribute to uh, making your liver unhealthy. So what are my advocating statements and advice on liver cancer and viral hepatitis awareness and prevention for the Filipinos? Number one, be aware of the so-called viral hepatitis and know how to recognize viral hepatitis in yourself and in other people like your friends, your relatives. Okay. Then beware of hepatitis B and C. Okay. Not as much as A, but B and C, beware of that. Be aware of the preventive measures against hepatitis A, B, and C. And all newborns should have hepatitis B vaccination. If you are a high risk for hepatitis B, go for a screening Hep B panel and then have a Hep B vaccination as needed. So these are my advice for for you guys who are who wants to avoid viral hepatitis and also liver cancer. Now, I uh, there are advocacy videos that are being flashed in the internet. Okay, I'll just show you two of them. Okay, so to drive home the point of uh, being aware of viral hepatitis and liver cancer so that you can, we can all try to avoid it. Okay. So I can probably click on this. Okay, let me see. It's not sure. Okay. We were really close, the four of us, in 2008. The doctor told our family to, to check each one of us, and unfortunately, all of us have hepatitis B. In the Philippines, hepatitis B is the leading cause of liver cancer. Six and eight of adult Filipinos are infected. Almost 8 million Filipinos, 80 90 percent, get their hepatitis B at birth. They're infected through mother to child transmission. We ignore our hepatitis B and then we just go with our lives. Avoid eating fats and uh, soft drinks. I I come here every Sunday to visit my younger brother, the cause of his death is liver failure. When my second brother was brought to the hospital for diagnosis, it was too late. My uh, third brother, he also have a Cancer. The doctor told us that he cannot prolong life. 
The Be Aware campaign is a project of the Hepatology Society of the Philippines that aims to raise awareness about hepatitis B. Lack of awareness leads to um, individuals not getting themselves tested, not seeking care. We were able to partner with Gilead to mount a media campaign that would have a substantial impact. Talk to a doctor about getting tested because our radio ads were voiced by a celebrity on prime time. Our TV commercial played on cinemas with some of the biggest releases of last year. We also have a billboard and some bus ads. We have a major presence in Facebook. We are able to answer questions. It really helps people to be more aware, to consult with a doctor on a frequent basis to know as much as possible our health condition. Siya na yung magpapalakas ng doon ko para magkasama ka ng lagi. Now, every time I check my HDB, there is almost undetectable. Hopefully, we can reach every Filipino. Each Filipino should be tested and vaccinated and be treated for hepatitis B. Okay. Ligo-ligo seniors ang nakilala kong gandurusa sa malnutrition. Bilang doktor, ang dami ko pong pasyente, walang lakas, masakit ang katawan, kulang sa nutrition. deliver our largest internal organ has a multitude of roles to keep our body functioning and healthy. It has important functions for our nutrition, digestion, immune system, blood clotting, and energy storage. Just as the liver works hard, it is not immune to disease. In the Philippines, viral hepatitis, especially hepatitis B, affects millions of Filipinos each year. Hepatitis B is the most common cause of liver cancer in the country. Liver cancer is ranked second of the top cancer killers of Filipinos. This silent plague coexists with the most recent ominous threat. The body is in constant battle, and there is an urgent call to stand against this threat. And today, we heed the call. This time, we protect the liver. As it constantly faces the threats of virus and cancer, closely linked to each other in the Philippines, the leading cause of liver cancer is chronic viral hepatitis infection. The colors red and yellow symbolize viral hepatitis C. The green ribbon stands for liver cancer, while the emerald ribbon for the advocacy of curbing hepatitis B. In other parts of the world, viral hepatitis and liver cancer months are celebrated separately, but in the Philippines, we do so together. To fight these two intimately related diseases, various sectors must come together because liver cancer and viral hepatitis can be treated and even prevented Awareness is just the first step. With this emblem comes our battle cry, our mantra, our heart song. Recognizing that viral hepatitis and liver cancer awareness must go hand in hand. It is only in the Philippines, the Republic Act 10526, that the advocacy for both these diseases affecting the liver are reinforced together annually every January. This is our call to act. Okay.
So let me end this talk by uh, summarizing what uh, was taken up. So I won't read them, read, read them anymore. So these are the contents that I tackled. Okay. So take away in relation to patient empowerment, be always in touch with reliable medical information on liver cancer and viral hepatitis. Knowledge is power. It gives power. Use the four keys of patient empowerment kalaman, kakayanan, karapatan, and kapangyarihan to gain gain greater control over decisions in the medical management of yourself or oneself by knowing the relationship of liver cancer and viral hepatitis and their prevention in one's health management. So with that, I end my pep talk today. I hope I have empowered you to have a better understanding of the relationship of liver cancer and viral hepatitis and their prevention in health management. So before we end, uh, go to the picture taking. Again, as a reminder, please take the online learning cum evaluation test exercise. And uh, 50, try to pass the olete to get a, uh, vouch a 50 voucher, target 50 vouchers okay, for you to have a uh, free uh, telemedical consultation. And then as a request again, please place your feedback in the chat box. So let's now have a group picture taking before we start the QA proper. Okay. Everybody's ready for the picture taking? Ready? Okay. Okay, ready? One, two. Okay, so the floor is now open for questions, reactions. Okay, any comments? Let me add. Let me add to the story of uh, Lucas. Actually, she, there are four in the family. Okay, so one by one, the three of the um, siblings died of liver cancer, secondary to hepatitis B. Okay, so ang natitira yung si Luke, si Baltasar o si Bal. So in 2013 or 14, she de he developed a liver cancer and then uh, he was initially operated on kahit na malaki na, 10 cm in size. Pero within one year, mukhang umulit. So they decided to have a liver transplant. Okay. So na transplant siya at a cost of I think 4 million or 14 million pesos. Na? Kahit, kahit na mahal na gawa. Na? Okay. So, 2016, baka yung transplant was done in 2016 or 17, and then ngayon, 2023 na. I think she's still alive. Okay. So, naka five years, uh, 2020, 17 plus, mga five years na siya. Na? Okay. So, fortunately, he's the one surviving. Na? So, magkakapatid na apat, tatlo, lahat got a uh, chronic hepatitis from the mother during childhood and then all developed liver cancer ang natitira na lang si Val no? okay so that's the uh, story of Val okay so any questions any reactions Hmm. No question in the chat box, mm -hmm. have it? There is none. Okay. So how many have hepatitis B profile have, have B panel already? How many? 
Lahat ba kayo meron na? No. Do you think you should have won? <laughs> when you have fatty liver in your ultrasound, is it needed? Fatty liver, it's not uh, directly, uh, I mean, fatty liver can be caused by a lot of things. You're eating uh, mga fatty foods, di ba? Okay. But it's, uh, sometimes you can start with a fatty liver with a hepatitis B or hep hepatitis, no? Sometimes, no? But uh, usually it's not, no? So the best way to determine uh, whether you have hepatitis uh, infection before is to do a hep. B or Rafa. hepatitis panel. Okay. Okay. So there are a lot of panels. It can be A, B, and C. Okay. It can be uh you know practical for me you don't have to do hepatitis A na, na A because mahal din yung mga hep panel na. So probably you focus on B or sometimes you can just B and C because C it can also cause uh, liver cancer. Na. Okay. Is it the so same as I don't really know how much it will it costs now, no? Mm -hmm. But, but uh, probably in a few days, I will, we will check how much will be the cost, no? Okay. Is HEP profile the same as HEP panel? Yeah. Okay. But you have to specify. You have to specify. It's A, kasi kung HEP panel, baka lahat gagawin. A, B, C, baka okay. mahal, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can be selective to say B or B and C. Yung dalawa, baka, baka mas mura, na? Okay. Or kumisan, yung mga laboratory, they put it in package. Pag package, baka mas mura nga kaysa yung dalawa lang, in na? So we have to ask around, na? Okay. Okay. So that, can you have a show of hands? How many have, uh, have panel already? I think that's the only way in which we will know whether you are you are protected already from uh, uh, Hep B, okay, or not, or Hep C. No? How many? How many have uh, panel? Ako meron na ako. Ako I'm protected. I uh, I have antibodies already, and I'm protected from hepatitis B. Ibig sabihin. During my uh, probably in the past, I was exposed, na pero uh, I, I I was able to recover, na kasi may antibodies na ako eh, na okay. So how many have anti hep hepatitis panel already? Hep panel, how many? Wala? Wala pa? Wala pa. Parang wala pa po doc. Hindi kami um, aware sa ganon. Okay. Parang, parang we feel it's need it's not needed. Okay. <laughs> Correct po. So, mm, so, do you think you want to have it? Yan ang tanong. If it is not expensive, why not? Ah, sige. Gawin natin ano. Uh, can we ask around? I bet can you ask around how much? And then... Okay. Uh, we will share it to these people who attended uh, this uh, pep talk today. Okay. Okay. Marian, Phoebe, Maria Polotan, Baby, Ikaw, Radies, Lorley, uh, Charlita's, uh, Chris, and that was si, si Charlita. Ma mother ko po, Doc. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, so sama natin yung si, si Charlita. Then, the left, the left, Jeng and Christy. So, so we will inform them of the cost and then whether um, then after that, we'll decide whether you want to have it or not. Nah? Okay. But as I, as I mentioned, as I mentioned in my lecture, ang pinaka mukhang may edad na kayo lahat, eh, di ba? <laughs> okay. Yung, usually yung mga bata Yung mga bata ang ano, na dapat meron, na? Okay. I really don't know kung dekahon na yung ano, routine na yung vaccination ng Hep B sa mga newborn in in even in private in private hospitals pala ko meron na eh, di ba? Okay, but in government hospitals hindi ko alam kung routine na yon, na? Okay. 
Okay. So let me check. No? Let me check kung uh, I'll ask around kung at birth libre yung vaccination hep B ng mga sa government hospital. No? In private hospitals, I think it's already uh, no. routine. It's routine na yan. No? Okay. Okay. So, comments? So, how many have sa, sino sa inyo may experience na with people dying of liver cancer secondary to chronic hepatitis? Wala? Wala. Oh, uh, my, my friend's father. My good friend's father. Uh, okay. Uh, matagal na ho. Just, uh, I mean, probably in the 8th, 9th, died of liver cancer. Liver cancer. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, he he was a heavy drinker. <laughs> he was a very heavy drinker. And then uh, he developed cirrhosis. Uh -huh. And then they, they went to the States. But uh, the... At that time, I think the doctors really couldn't do anything, so uh -huh. he was sent home. He did. He did die of liver cancer, Paul. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. He, he was angry. <laughs> he was a funny guy, but he was a very heavy drinker. I mean, yeah. talagang... Okay. So in that in that patient, we don't know if uh, it was related to hepatitis B or alcohol. No, no, no. He, the, the, what I remembered was. He did have cirrhosis. Yeah, pero yung cause, kasi alcohol cirrhosis, hepatitis, chronic hepatitis B can lead to cirrhosis, eh, na. Oh, oh, could, oh, uh, yes. So and maybe. The only way to determine whether <laughs> whether it's the uh, chronic hepatitis or alcohol that uh, that led to the development of liver cancer is to have the uh, the the blood test, na the panel, na okay. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they can coexist. Sabay si ng dalawa. Alcohol plus the hepatitis. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have. I'd like to share also. Uh, uh, a person, well, an experience with, with among my students. See, si, I'm sure you know her, uh, Sasha Elizalde. Um, anak ni Fred Elizalde. Okay. Uh, she was our student in the school from a very young age. She had a liver transplant at 18 months old because they discovered her liver cancer at that age. So she was only a baby and they had to, to really transplant uh, her, but she's still alive and she's thriving but uh, well <laughs> luckily both her parents were very rich uh, they spent millions on her uh, because of all the immune drugs she had to the, the medicine she had to take for her liver because she had a liver transplant but she's yeah. living a very healthy life now I mean she's well she she has she's married she has uh uh, a, a son, the last I know of, she had a son who was also a student. So it, it, you, you can, but it had to be uh, that. It, luckily, she was diagnosed early, pero talaga ho, 18 months pa lang siya. She was, uh, they found her liver cancer positive. Okay. <laughs> so again, uh, anong cost ng liver cancer niya? Is it hep? Indeed. B. Probably po. Baby pa siya eh. So I, I guess um, I I don't know. <laughs> Baka hindi. Baka ibang cancer. Baka, kasi you can have other types of cancer kung baby. No? Mm -mm. So usually mm -mm. But yung mga, they, yung mga but they, mm -mm. infection usually can be acquired during birth. No? At birth. But oh, it will take oh. some time before they develop into cirrhosis and then cancer. No? Mm -mm. So, so usually years. To, yeah. Pero yun nga ho, they, they had to have a liver transplant. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> At that age in sa, sa, sa America. Yeah. So, okay. um, wow. I, I remembered uh, because in our school, uh, every, every child must enrolled must have a medical report. 
Uh-huh. And uh, you can see my fingers. Most most children's every every other child's medical report was one sheet, two sheets. Uh-huh. When she came in, her medical report was this thick uh-huh. binder. <laughs> because andun lahat yung <laughs> talagang oh my god, it was. I I mean personally, I was stunned when I had to read through all the just go, and she was. I think four years old pa lang noon when she came in. I mean, uh-huh. that, okay. that take about her, that yeah. was really uh, stunning. Talagang, ay, Diyos ko, ano ba to? Yeah. So we found... Hindi na sinamarize, ha? Hindi, talaga kung andun lahat. I mean, um, talaga nandun. And she, she always traveled with a nurse. Uh-huh. Two nurses in the car. They would wait for her. You know, ganun ho ka, nakakasela na, talaga. They would bring her to school, they would park somewhere with two nurse, two, a nurse or two, and then pick her up and then... And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but she's an trans- adult now. She's okay. Na ano naman. She's okay. lived a, a full life. Okay siya. <laughs> So, naagapan ng liver tra- transplant. Okay. So, I can imagine. And as you she said, very... Ma- she, has, she has the money. <laughs> they have the money. Yes. Ma- yes, mahal, luckily. Mahal lang maintenance drugs dyan eh. Yes, mm-hmm. Lima, 30, 40,000 a month. No? Oh. <sighs> wow. Okay. It, it, that's lifelong one, no? I mean, when you have oh, a liver... Yeah. A liver lifelong yan. Oh, oh. No. Okay, thank you for sharing. Okay. So any other share sharer? Mga kilala ninyo? Anybody? Okay. So, Ako pa daw. Ah. Ako po. Ah, sige, Phoebe. Kasi medyo na gore na ako dito. Eh. Yung father ko 1969 namatay din siya liver cancer. Okay. Tapos cirrhosis. Tapos itong 2019 yung kapatid ko ganun din. Is there ano lang and cirrhosis din. Liver. Tapos yung isang pinsan ko ganun din. So <laughs> baka ako susunod. Magpaano ah, kung magkapatay is B panel ka na? Mm, yun na nga Ay, parang interesado na rin ako. Okay. Kasi tatlo na na sa family eh. Father ko, tapos yung kapatid, tapos yung pinsan ko. Pare-pare yung cirrhosis. Yeah. Pero okay. magkano naman kaya yun? <laughs> yun nga lang. Yeah. Um, oh, sige. Canvas so, mo na ng price ko. Uh-uh. Sige. Beth will help okay. us. Maghanap si Beth ng okay. ano, kung saan ang pinakamura. Mm. No. Okay. Thank Then, you. I would recommend kung B, kung ano yung pinakamura yung panel, B or, at minimum mm-hmm. is B. No? Kung misan, you okay. may have to do C. B and C. Pero yung last checkup ko, wala namang sign, di ba? Oh, yeah. Usually, walang walang symptoms yung mga ganun eh. Usually, walang symptoms. Oh. No? Okay. okay. Pag sa chronic, usually, walang symptoms until lumabas na yung ano yung cirrhosis yung bukol no yung mga ganun mm. no? okay okay kasi malalim yung yung atay sa loob May, mahirap kapain mm. din no okay may ultrasound ka di ba nagpa ultrasound ka sa chan wala wala ah, sige na, let's start with uh, so you're at reset for liver cancer, for cirrhosis. Let's have your hepatitis yes. profile first. Okay. Kasi yes. pag sinabi ng ultrasound negative for bukol, doesn't mean na uh, wala kang hepatitis. Eh. So, it, kailangan yeah. may hep panel ka pa rin. Na? Oh, okay. Okay? So, you just okay. wait for, for our announcement. Na? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. So... So we'll we'll try to make this more ano, actionable after this talk. So we will try to see if uh, we can uh, uh, have a program in which uh, those, especially those who attended this lecture, whether they want to have a hep B profile. No? Okay. So, but 
part of the program will be uh, to uh, to canvas the prices, of course, di ba? And then to advise you whether you should have it or not, na? Okay. Okay. Now, any more questions? Any more comments? Thank you for sharing, Phoebe. So if there are no more questions, we, we uh, end our pep talk for this topic. Okay. So, but let me just announce yung uh, this is a Cancer Crusaders Club, no? Number one, uh, if you want to have a certificate that you're a member of Cancer Crusader Club, you, you direct your request to ABET already, na? Para ma issue kayo ng certificate, na? Okay. Number two, yung Breast Self-Examination Award, na? Okay. We will start posting it also, the rules, no? the deadline. No? So those who want to join can start uh, writing us also. No? Okay. And then the last one is, uh, we start also the program in Talk to a Cancer Crusader. No? So if you have mga friends who are, kahit na not my patients, but who are cancer patients, no? Who wants to talk to a cancer crusader? Just tell Abed, or even Radis. Radis is here, no? Okay, okay, okay. No more questions. Let's call it a day, no? Hey, Doc. Okay. Thank you, Doc. So, Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Doc Ray. Bye bye. Hey, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Bye -bye. Uh -huh. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank bye -bye. you, Doc. Bye bye. Thank you po. Hi, happy trickings. Happy trickings also. Oh, yeah, happy trickings. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.